topic today is the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I am going to start by reading Matthew 1, 18. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. From this verse, we know that the Holy Spirit has been there even before Jesus was born. If that's so, then why is the Holy Spirit a gift from Jesus? So this leads to a question, who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. From Genesis to Revelation, the Holy Spirit has always been there. One of the evidence of the Holy Spirit being part of God and Jesus as the Trinity is in Genesis 2, verses 20, 26. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our own image. Here, God is referring to himself as us, God the Father, God the Son, who is Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. The three of them were present at the beginning of creation and, an, and the creation of mankind, and so for the birth of Jesus, the three were also together. Um, as we know, we, we as humans are spiritual beings, and though we live in a flesh, but we are spiritual beings. And I've got a verse which Paul wrote to the Romans in um, Romans 8, 9. It says, You, however, you are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, and if you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. So as we see here, the Holy Spirit gives us our sense of belonging to Christ. So, um... That belonging gives us our identity in Christ Jesus. And there's another chapter that I wanted to read as well, which is um, um, John 16, um, 12 to 15. You can read everything, but I'll just read um, 12 to 13. And it says, I have so much to say to you. This is Jesus speaking, by the way. I have so much to say to you, more than, I can, more than you can bear, speaking to his disciples. But when he, the Spirit of truth, referring to the Holy Spirit, comes, he will guide you into all the truths. He will not speak on his own. He will not speak on his own. He, all the truth, uh, he will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. But this basically, Jesus was actually speaking to his disciples here that just as he came and hears and everything he actually says comes from the Father, the Holy Spirit is actually meant to come and speak everything from what Jesus, what comes from him. So, and when and as we saw in the first part as well, the, Jesus couldn't do everything. You no, know, he gave us salvation, but he couldn't do as much as he wanted to, um, because he had to save us. But the Holy Spirit was there to fill in that gap for for us for the rest of eternity till he returns again. So, it's, it's a continuation of what Jesus' life is basically, and. Um, it's such a great gift has been given to us and it's just a shame that sometimes um, it's like actually a gift wrapped up in many different gifts because even when the Holy Spirit comes into us it brings many gifts as well but those gifts are not revealed to us as when he comes it's revealed to us as we journey with him he trusts us more to actually reveal and give us even more gifts so it's actually one gift but wrapped up in many different gifts as well um just as we see in solemn um, um, spirit of um, gift of wisdom understanding fortitude counsel um wisdom comes from um that he gave solomon in his time so that was by that was by the holy spirit um just to conclude so Matthew 1, 23, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. The word Trinity from, um, from three, which is T-R-I, meaning um, three or unity together as one. God is three distinct individuals, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Because of our sinful nature, and because God is a spirit, he cannot operate on earth without human body. So he had to come down as Jesus, but Jesus cannot 
be conceived through the seed of a man because of our sinful nature. Therefore, the only way for a man to be without sin is through the Holy Spirit. It was through the Holy Spirit the angel of the Lord appeared to Mary, then to Joseph in a dream when he was planning to divorce Mary secretly. The whole journey up until the time Jesus was born was directed by the Holy Spirit. We cannot do anything without the Holy Spirit. And when we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we have the gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus did not only come to die for our sins. Before he was, before he was arrested and nailed on the cross for our sins, Jesus promised us believers the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is John 14, 15 to 20. And indeed, his promises to us was fulfilled in Acts 2, 1 to 4, the day of the Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came down like tongues of fire upon the disciples. Though the Holy Spirit was given to us as gift, many of us still struggle to accept the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit is made available to all when we come in faith when we come to faith in Christ, just like Jesus died for all, the gift of the Holy Spirit is also available to all mankind through Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Joel 2, 28 to 29, I'll just say the first part, which says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So this clearly says that God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh, not some, not just believer, but upon all flesh. God has given us great comforter, helper, the Holy Spirit as a gift. And our prayer today is that God will open the eyes of our hearts to receive the Holy Spirit and receive the gift that Jesus Christ has given us with joy in our hearts. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.